Hello guys and welcome to another video. If you're new to my channel, my name is Johan and you're watching Johan Exotic. And if you're not new to my channel and this is not your first video, thank you so much for returning and watching yet another video. So thank you. But in this video, I'm gonna do another isopod setup. And if you missed my last video setting up isopods, I'm gonna put a note up here somewhere or there so you can watch that video before you watch this one. But in this video, I got even more isopods. I went to my grandma again and I went straight for the places where I found the other isopods. And there is an update for those isopods. I'm gonna put like a little video over me right now where you can see so many babies. They have been breeding like crazy. I know that some of them were already pregnant when I got them because there was a lot of adults there. So they usually don't breed this quick, but there were a lot of them that were pregnant and they already released the babies. So I'm really excited that that colony is going crazy. And when I went there again, I picked up even more isopods with that colony and I found another species of isopods and I did that last time too, but last time I only found one. This time I found a total of 14. So I figured that I would bring home those two and do a similar setup for those. So hopefully some of them are also pregnant and hopefully this colony will start breeding as quick as the last one. Probably won't, but hopefully. Usually when you start off with isopod colony, you want at least 12. I have 14, so this should work. It might just take longer, but it's gonna work. So let's start off with the setup. And as you can see, I'm using the same container with a lot of top ventilation. Isopods need good ventilation. The thing with top ventilation is that the substrate can't actually dry up really quick. So you wanna be careful with that. But I have a way to get around that, so I'm gonna show that later, but let's just start adding the substrate in here. And like last time, I'm gonna start adding some dirt in here. And you obviously don't want just dirt in here because isopods, they eat what they're living in, which is kind of cool. But you wanna add leaf litter, and you want that leaf litter to be mixed into the substrate like this. And you also wanna add some decaying wood, I think it's called. All right, so you can see now it's almost too much of decaying wood and leaves in here. So let's add some more dirt. All right, so this is what you're looking for in the substrate. Almost a little bit too much of uh, the leaves and the cane wood. You want the leaf litter and the cane wood in here because when they actually burrow down, they want to have a food source down there. But on top of this, I will add even more leaf litter. So I'm gonna put some more dirt in here to mix in with the substrate. Okay, now I really like how it looks. I think this is perfect. So this is the way I get around the substrate from drying out too quick. I put everything away from this corner right here and I'm gonna take this sphagnum moss and sphagnum moss is great because it retains moisture really, really well. It takes a long time before the moisture actually leaves. And I'm just gonna fill this whole corner right here with just the moss, no dirt or anything. All right, so you can see this is a corner right here with just sphagnum moss. I have the dirt all over here now. So this is how you get around it. You will see on this side of the enclosure when it's wet. And when I pour in water, I'm gonna pour in water on this side and you can see the water coming all over here. So you can see what part of the substrate that is moist and what part of the substrate that are dry. So I'm gonna keep pouring water in here and you don't want the whole substrate to be moist. You want a part, like half of it, a third of it. And that's why I'm gonna pour down water here so I don't overflow it. That's easy to just do that when you're a beginner with isopods, that you overflow the whole thing and it becomes too wet. So you wanna have one side just a little bit wet so the isopods actually can choose where to go. If they want to dry, they can go on this side. If they want some moisture, they can go to this side. So now I have it all set up. Now I'm gonna add some water to it because the substrate is bone dry. You don't want it to be bone dry, at least not all of it and now too much of it is too dry. So I'm gonna add some water here. You can probably see after how the water is moisting up the substrate. And like I said, it's gonna take a while before this dries out. And now since this is bone dry, it might not have the same effect as I wanted to. The water is probably gonna come under it and it's gonna lay on, on the bottom of the whole substrate. But that's not necessarily too bad because the ice buds, when they need moisture, they just dig down like spiders. So I can't really show the camera now because if I tip it over, all the water will go that way. But the water level is like this. Yeah, about that. Under the whole thing now. 
which is good. So I'm gonna add some more and that will help the bottom of the substrate stay moist. And eventually I wanna keep around this area to be moist and this area to be dry. And again, I haven't showed the eye spots. So these are the eye spots. This is a amelidium, amelidium? Ame I can't say that word. <laughs> I'm gonna put it on the screen. I know what it is, I just can't pronounce it. But the thing is, I don't know which species it is of that species. So if you can ID these for me, that would be great. Uh, let's continue setting up the enclosure. Uh, let's actually add the cork bark and you can see I have the bridge shape, I think I called the last video because then the isobots can actually go under here without touching the substrate. And I think especially this species want it like this for them to breed. Some species are more picky than others, like the Procelli levels I set up last time. I don't think they're too picky how bridge shaped their cork bark is, but I think these are. So I'm just gonna use these for this setup. I'm gonna put this one on this side. You can see the whole substrate is moving because the water haven't soaked in yet. And then I'm gonna put this little guy, it's not really bridge shaped. I'm gonna put this so the isobots can actually go under it to go to the moist area to have a drink. So if they don't wanna go out and expose themselves in the open, they can travel under the cork bark. That's what I'm trying to set up at least. And here is another bridge shaped cork bark. I'm just gonna put this like this. Maybe it's just too much cork bark. So let me just leave it in here. I'm gonna put it up here though because I wanna fit this in here. And what this is, this is cuddle bone, I think it was, I can't remember what it was. And that comes from, okay, I forgot it this time too. It's not squid, but it's like the cuttlefish, cuttlefish, this time I remember. This comes from cuttlefish, it's calcium. You wanna put this in with your isopods because they need calcium. And if you don't have those, you can use eggshells, you can use calcium powder, other things that just has calcium in it because they're gonna need that because if they don't have it, they're gonna die. So we wanna have that in there. All right, so that is the enclosure. I'm really happy how it turned out. It's not really much you can do differently with an isopod setup, at least not if you wanna keep it like this. You can obviously put isopods in a nice terrarium or aquarium. If you do that, you can obviously set it up really nice, but this is how nice you can set it up in a container like this, at least in my opinion. So. I'm really happy with it. I'm gonna add the isopods. I'm gonna add them up on this cork bark right here. And then I'm gonna grab the camera real quick and we're gonna do some footage when they're exploring. So I will see you guys soon. All right, so I can't really get that much footage because there were only 14 of them. If it was like the other colony where there are like 50 now, it's gonna be easier to get footage of them. And I also don't wanna disturb them more because they've been in this container, obviously with uh, dirt in it before this video for one day now. So I really just don't wanna disturb them. I want them to just settle in and hopefully they will have babies. But anyways, that is the video. I hope you like this ice spot setup. Comment down below if you have any tips how you would set it up. If there is anything you want me to change, I am not an isopod expert. I know a lot about them, but I'm definitely not an expert. Like I said, I don't even know what species this is. So if you want to help me, feel free to drop a comment, drop a like if you like this video, and I will see you in the next video.